Have you been having trouble hanging in during hand battles, especially against younger players? It's easy to blame this on technology and tell yourself, well, they're just using more powerful, poppier paddles. But I hate to break it to you. You may be struggling because you're getting older and you just can't compete with their faster reaction time. After our mid-20s, our reaction time slows by as much as three to five milliseconds per year, which means that by our mid-60s, our reaction time may be half as fast as it was at our peak when we were young. The good news is there are things that we can do to counteract or even reverse this decline. Today, I'm gonna cover the most important exercise that we can do for healthy aging and longevity that will also help our hand speed. When the ball is coming at us during our firefight, our reaction time is a three-step process. First, our brain has to identify the ball as a target that we wanna hit. Then the brain sends a signal through neural pathways to our muscles, our muscles fire, and we move. This is, of course, a very simplified model because our body's ability to see, process, and coordinate complex movements is much more magical than that. But for the sake of this discussion, let's think about reaction time as like flipping on a light. So the switch is our brain, the wiring represents the neural pathways, and the light bulb is our muscles. As we age, there's evidence to show that all three of these are impacted. We have delays in our brain processing, we have slowing in nerve conduction, and our muscles get weaker and slower. And while there are things that we can do to improve the first two steps that we'll talk about in the future, when we flip a switch and the light flickers, we don't immediately think, oh, we need to change out the switch or we need to redo the wiring. We check the light bulb. And that's our first priority for this 85 day reset is to focus on what we can do for muscle strength and function. Starting around age 30, we lose an average of three to 5% of our muscle mass per decade. And this drop off is much more precipitous for women in the perimenopausal years, which can be as early as age 40, but definitely by age 50, because estrogen is a key hormone in muscle maintenance and muscle function. For men, the decrease in testosterone is more steady over the years, but has a steeper decline after about age 65. You're probably aware that we have two types of muscle fibers. The type one slow twitch fibers are built for low intensity sustained activities. They don't generate as much force, but they fatigue more slowly. So this is what we use for endurance type activities. Type two fibers are fast twitch. They are our power fibers. They're responsible for rapid explosive movements like reacting at the kitchen line or running down a lob. They generate a lot more force, but they also fatigue more quickly. As we age, our fast twitch fibers decrease in size and in number, while our slow twitch fibers tend to be relatively unaffected. This is why we're struggling with our hand battles. The other problem with our muscle that occurs as we get older is what's called anabolic resistance. Basically, our muscles become resistant to the typical signals that tell them to build and repair. And even if we do the same things, if we do the same workouts, if we maintain the same diet, we still get weaker, we still lose muscle mass. And that's why unexpectedly, mysteriously, in our 40s, 50s, and 60s, our body composition will change. We gain body fat and we lose muscle mass without doing anything differently. So it's a double hit as we get older that we're not only losing muscle mass, but our body's ability to re respond to the signals to build and maintain it is blunted. This loss of muscle mass is called sarcopenia. And the other effect it can have beyond reaction time on the pickleball court is it increases our risk of falling, which is the number one source of pickleball related injuries. When we start to stumble, it's our fast twitch fibers that kick in most quickly to help us recover and regain balance. Even beyond the pickleball court, the ramifications of sarcopenia are widespread in our bodies. It can affect our metabolic health. It affects how well we use glucose and glycogen. So it can cause insulin resistance and potentially diabetes. And there are also effects on our risk for cardiovascular disease. Good news is resistance training can help us intervene in this process, but it's important to know what type of resistance and how we should do this. Here's the issue. When someone like me, a gray haired lady in my fifties walks into a gym and wants to start weightlifting, there's a bias that I should pick up the super cute, colorful dumbbells and lift a lot of repetitions of light weights. And this is pervasive. This even happened with a trainer that I worked with briefly. 
But what I have learned from Stacey Sims, who is one of the world's leading exercise physiologists, particularly with the research she's done for women throughout the lifespan, she has a book on perimenopausal training and nutrition and several great podcasts that I'll link to in the description below. What I've learned is that lifting light is not enough. And this is true for men as well. We'll talk about this. When we lift light, we're only activating the slow twitch fibers. It's not enough load or enough challenge to stimulate the fast twitch fibers that we're trying to keep and maintain as we age. Dr. Sims explains that as we enter menopause, women get weaker for several reasons. And the first is that estrogen plays a role in the muscle protein interaction, the bond between actin and myosin. And as we decrease our estrogen levels, that bond is weaker. So even without losing any visible muscle mass, even if we look the same, the force of our muscle contraction itself is weaker. We don't have oomph when we try to tighten our muscles. And then secondly, our satellite cells, which are the precursor cells to mature muscle cells, are maintained by estrogen. So as the levels drop off, our ability to rebuild and maintain our existing muscle mass decreases. So we atrophy. The solution to this, according to Dr. Sims, is lift heavy shit. And by heavy, she means one to six reps with two reps in reserve. So if you're able to punch out 10 to 12 reps, you're not lifting heavy enough weights. When we lift heavy, three things happen. Heavy loads force your brain to recruit additional neural circuits and expand motor units, which is the location where the neuron interacts with the muscle. So this effectively is enlisting your central nervous system to rewire neural pathways to compensate for some of the function that we've lost with the decrease in estrogen. Secondly, lifting heavy recruits fast twitch fibers more than lightweight lifting. And third, lifting heavy also stimulates muscle protein synthesis, some of the metabolic pathways that help us better utilize protein to rebuild muscle. So it helps to counter that anabolic resistance. For men, the urgency to lift heavy isn't as abrupt as it is for women after age 50, but because testosterone is just decreasing, it still has the same benefits. This is a study done in 2023 where they actually took muscle biopsies from masters athletes and they compared lifelong endurance athletes, muscle biopsies to men who did strength training consistently and they compare those to younger athletes, and they found that the fiber type preservation and the percentage of fast twitch fibers was equal in the long-term strength trained older men compared to the younger men. I'm not aware of a similar study that's been done in women, but the research at least does suggest that we can improve our fast twitch fibers with heavy lifting strength training and a second component, which is power training. To clarify, strength is defined as the maximum force that a muscle can generate. So think, what is the max amount of weight that I can do for a single bench press? Power is the ability to produce that force quickly. Again, it relates to those type two fibers. So power is how quickly you can respond as you start to stumble, how quickly you can turn and run to catch that lob. So in parallel with the loss of fast twitch fibers as we age, studies have shown that power decreases with aging. In the same way that sarcopenia can be detrimental to our general health, doing strength training has been shown in multiple studies to have wide ranging health benefits for us. It does counteract that insulin resistance, the risk for metabolic disease and diabetes and cardiovascular disease. It also improves bone health. It also improves brain health, decreases our risk of falling. So my biggest priority for this 85 day reset is strength training and strength with power. I don't like to lift weights. I never have, but I'm gonna learn because I understand now much more clearly how important this is, not just on the pickleball court, but for my long-term health. Please, 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 before you start this, make sure you get medical clearance and work with a trainer. I have found somebody who understands my goals and he is helping me learn to do these things safely. There is a reason why there's the bias towards super cute, colorful dumbbells. And he is having me work with dumbbells because we're starting with a strength foundation first, making sure I do the form properly, and then gradually building up to the power. And little by little, he's gonna help me get to big girl lifts with barbells. The key thing with a trainer is not just to do things safely, but also because 
We need to have periodization where you have a cycle where you build up, build up, and then you take some time off. We need to have somebody who's standing there. My trainer is attentive to my mobility issues. He's attentive to previous surgeries I've had. So he's really cautious of making sure I'm not having pain as we do these things. And so you want someone who can customize a program and individualize it for you. Because I don't have any travel between now and my next tournament on February 19th, I'm committing to three days a week. But if you are starting from scratch, if you are strapped for time, then even one day a week can be beneficial. The key is figuring out a schedule that we can do consistently, not just for the next 85 days, but for the long term. I don't know if I can keep doing three days a week, but I hope to because strength training, power training is the most important thing we can do to stave off sarcopenia, this loss of muscle mass, and to help handle the heat of hand battles. Let me know what your goals are. Leave me a comment. I will see you on Thursday.